myself in ten minutes. It's quarter to ten, <laughs> and we're God knows where. And Kaz is cooking plantain. <laughs> Show them the view. Um, on our frying pan that we haven't used yet, that we got from Decathlon the other day. Um, and this is the view. You can't really see much. But we did position our tent specifically to give us that particular view. Or I did anyway. There's a river down there that you can't really see. That's Kaz's favourite tree. She reckons there's bunnies living under it. <laughs> um, and today we've come about 50 kilometres, I think, from Liège um, down through a town I can't remember the name of. <laughs> um, Roshan Shong or something. And to the Red Cross Centre in or near another town that I can't remember the name of, a little village. What? Non Chevu, I think. Yeah, non non chevu. Non chevu. Something like that. No hair. Um where we spoke to some of the workers there who said the worker I spoke to said that she loved her job because it meant that she had a chance to meet lots of different people from different nationalities. They have about 30 nationalities there at the moment and there's about 200, 210 people, including 50 children running around. Um, one kid on a bike took a shine to Kaz, um, I think because we pulled up with a couple of bikes as well. Um, and. Yeah, then we had. Congo spoke French, English, and Dutch. I don't know how old she was, but she'd only been here a year and spoke all of the languages. Nice. They have classes, and the Iraqis we spoke to, who are one Ira Iraqi guy in particular, was 38, and he said that he had an absolute horror show learning French um, in a classroom full of eight year olds. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so there was this other. Somali guy um, who'd just received a negative response to his asylum claim, he's going to appeal but the woman I spoke to in the Red Cross centre the Red Cross employee said that Somalis quite often have trouble because they can't actually prove that they're from Somalia because they don't have documents and so a lot of them get negative results even though if only they could prove where they'd come from they would actually get positive results. And this guy had been, had had his interview and had then been left waiting for eight months in the centre, checking the post every single day for his decision and after eight months got a negative result. Um, as you can imagine, he was furious. <laughs> um, the Iraqi guys as well, the, the other Iraqi guy had been here for a year and he hasn't even had an interview yet. And he said to me that it's, it's one thing, obviously, he'd wait for two years um, for a positive result, but he simply doesn't know if he'd get a positive result or a negative result. Um, so his life is basically on pause. Um, and although it is a beautiful place to come and live, maybe for a little while, I can imagine it would get pretty boring after more than about six months, maybe, in summer. Um, but yeah, it's pretty darn cold right now. But yeah, they all live together like a big United Nations hostel. Mm. And um, yeah, the, the Iraqi guy we were speaking to said that uh, yeah, he had no family or friends in Belgium. So whoever was in the centre, that was who he had made friends with. So yeah, is that plantain done? Do they want to see it? It's getting pretty ready. This is our life. Nope, oh, that one's a bit bent. <laughs> Talking to people about migration and frying. setting up camp and frying plantain. <laughs> good night. Kaz, say good night.
Why am I saying goodnight to you anyway?